In the last couple of years, we've seen a bunch of HDMI adapters for the GameCube, such as the Carby from Insurrection Industries or the more recent Retrobit Prism. These adapters allow you to connect your GameCube to a modern television using HDMI. The main problem with these adapters is they need to be connected to a digital port on a GameCube. There are two main models of GameCube. The DOL001 has both an analog and a digital port on the back, but the more recent DOL101 only has an analog port. And in the past, that meant you couldn't use any of these HDMI adapters with these types of GameCubes. But Dan Coons has saved this again. He's developed a kit that allows you to replace the analog port on the DOL101 models with a digital port that allows you to use these HDMI adapters with these newer GameCubes. Let's head over to the bench and see what it's all about. I'll be basing this guide off of Dan's install video. First things first, let's take apart this console. At this point, we've taken the motherboard out and we have the disk drive over here. We have to take the shields off of the bottom part of the console and the bottom part of the disk drive. Don't put the disk drive face down like this on something because you don't want to damage the laser here. So I'm just going to hold it in my hands. and then make sure you put the disk drive up like this. You can put everything else aside and just get your two shields out. We're gonna need to modify both of these shields to get the flex cable to fit. I'm gonna use a Sharpie now just to outline exactly where we're gonna cut. Let's work on the bottom shield first. We're gonna make a cut here, kind of removing this screw right here, and it's gonna end right about here. So we're gonna leave this other screw hole here, but we're gonna cut a notch in this part of the shield all the way to the bottom of the shield here. So basically everything here and there, all this part that I've put X's on, we're gonna notch out. And if you take the top shield that was underneath the disk drive and sort of line it up where we had made a mark on the bottom shield, if we line it up there, we're gonna continue these lines on the top shield as well. And we're gonna go all the way to about halfway here halfway on the shield there, put an X. So we're gonna notch out that spot with the X's. And then on this side, we're gonna remove this piece here. This whole chunk right here, all the way to the top. And then right here, from about here, to right about there. So this little L part right here is going to be removed. I don't recommend doing this without a Dremel because these shields are kind of thick, but you might have some luck with some tin snips. Giant disclaimer, please, if you're gonna do this yourself, be safe. I had to wear work gloves and safety glasses because there were sparks flying from that thing. This, this metal is pretty thick and uh, you're definitely gonna have sparks if you use a Dremel. So please be safe. Know what you're doing if you're gonna cut that yourself with the Dremel. After I cut the pieces with the Dremel, I just filed down the edges here so that there's no sharp parts on any of the surfaces. Now let's go ahead and put the bottom shield back in. get 
that out of the way. And then we can go ahead and attach the bottom shield back on the disk drive. Go ahead and bring in the GameCube motherboard. Our next goal is to remove this analog port here. First thing I'm gonna do is add some solder. Dan uses a heat gun to remove this, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use my desoldering gun to desolder the pins in the middle here, and then I'll use some solder wick to wick the solder from these four remaining little ground legs here. Just gonna use my tweezers and make sure that I've got these pins all the way desoldered. All right, that looks pretty good. Actually, I did get this solder sucker that has a silicone tip, so this might actually be big enough to fit over these pins here. So let's try to use that first. Let's try to add some more flux. Kind of get these pads heated up. Yeah, that kind of worked. Let's try another one. Let's add some more solder. Let's do another one. Seems to be working all right. Right, so a lot of the solder is out of those holes. It seems like it's mostly out. I'm, I wonder if I can kind of heat up these legs and get it to come out a little bit. It can like wiggle out here, so it's not really attached by much. Wow, look at that, that was pretty easy. I think that's the ticket if you don't have a hot air gun and you do have a desoldering gun and a nice solder sucker, you can desolder the pins and use the solder sucker and you've got a pretty easy job of taking this analog port out. Our next job is to clean up the analog port pads here. We want this as flat as possible because a flex cable is gonna be going right through this area. All right, that's pretty good. Let's clean this up with some alcohol. All right, now that we have this out of the way, we're gonna need to take a couple of components off the board here. There's one that's black right here, and then there's a really small one that's brown next to it. I think you can kind of barely see it here. So this black one here and this brown one here have to be removed. And just sort of the easiest thing to do is add solder to both sides and then just kind of heat them both up and then the pieces come right off. Just be careful not to remove any wrong components. Okay, that's those two components removed. And while we're here, let's clean those pads up. Be very careful again not to remove anything you don't want to. All right, now we're gonna install this flex cable. It's gonna butt up against this component here. And you'll notice that there's two points over here that we're gonna have to solder. So Dan recommends to pre-tin the pads underneath them, but one of those pads is a test point that we're gonna need to scrape some of the solder mask off of. So first things first, let's scratch some of the mask off of that test point. And then we can tin it. So that point here, and this test point here. That's kind of hard to do, but I think that should be good. Then we're gonna line this up here, and we'll tack it down at this chip here. Just gonna add some flux to my tip here so that we can line the 
cable up and tack it down. Do the other side too. And now we can kind of do a little bit of drag soldering to connect all these pieces here. So it should come out something like that. All right, and now we can do these two here. Okay, that looks pretty good. Now we're gonna go ahead and solder this little quick solder board to the flex cable here. So if you put it over these points on the flex cable, you'll notice that there are still some points here from the old analog port that we're gonna need to solder to. So these ones, these ones aren't gonna line up, but this one will. But we need to line up basically everything with these points here on the flex cable, the three points on the old analog port, and this capacitor over here. We'll go ahead and we'll tack some points down here. All right, that looks good. Let's do the other end of the flex cable so that none of this moves. And then we'll go ahead and solder everything. and then this little capacitor side here. Next, we have to connect this 12 volt pad right here to this right point here on this, I think that's the uh, fan header. So we're gonna attach a wire from there to the right leg there. Dan uses some pretty thick cable in his video. So I have this 22 gauge ribbon cable that I use for some LEDs. So I'm gonna use a piece of that. So I'm gonna tin this pad and then go ahead and tack this down. Then I'm gonna tin this point here, measure the wire and cut it, and solder it on there. Now Dan recommends using a multimeter to test continuity to see if any of these points are bridged, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that. All right, everything looks good. Now we're gonna prepare this flex cable. So we're gonna go ahead and add this in here. And then he's got some sort of cool fold that he does. So you wanna fold it like a 90 here. And then take the cable out and then fold it back on itself so that it goes underneath. Let's try that, add this back. He says that the goal is to try to avoid this screw hole here. And then once you've got it lined up, just kind of crease it a little bit. You don't wanna go crazy because you don't wanna bend this, you don't wanna break this flex cable. Put this aside for a second and bring the bottom shell in. Then you can go ahead and put the board into the case, press it down, and you'll notice that that flex cable comes out the hole that we cut. Then we're gonna go ahead and cut this screw hole thing down a little bit. So that it's out of the way. And then we're gonna cut this little stubby part here off.
put that aside a second and grab this piece here. Now he says to add a bevel to this connector piece here. And he has a huge file that he uses. I only have this small file, so I'm gonna see if I can make something happen and kind of take the sharp edge off of both this side up here and the side of the, the corner in the bottom here. Okay, so that's one side. Let's do the other. All right, I think that's pretty good on both sides and you'll notice it's just kind of rounded on both the top and bottom edge there. And now let's put this piece into the 3D printed piece like this. These screw holes are kind of on the so same side as the PCB. So when you put it in here, to line up with this screw hole here. If you put it in all the way. The screw holes here are kind of on the side of the PCB. Put it in there all the way so that this part lines up. And then you take the little screw nut combo and you screw it in. All right, now you can grab the console again. Grab two of the screws that go around the edge here and we're gonna screw this in place. Now let's go ahead and screw these screws in here. Then you can go ahead and attach that flex cable to the adapter. At this point, we can go ahead and test the port. I have this Carby HDMI adapter. I'm gonna go ahead and do some testing with that. I forgot to mention you'll have to plug in this part to use the power adapter. All right, so the testing went well. I got picture out of the Carby, except for there was an error message on the GameCube, which is expected because we don't have a disk drive installed. You'll have this drill block piece for drilling out the audio port in the back shield here. What we've got to do is put this big part into the analog port slot here on the back shield. And we're gonna drill out a small hole in this hole right here. This isn't gonna be the same size as the audio jack. This is just to make a kind of like pre-drill hole into this case so that we can drill with the larger bit afterwards. So go ahead and drill that hole. Just be careful not to put your finger where the hole is gonna be. So now I've got to draw out this smaller hole so that I can fit the analog port here. Dan said that the 3 16th drill bit is just barely too small, so let's go to the next biggest one, which is 13 64ths. Yep, that seems to be just perfect. Let's go ahead and put the GameCube back together and then we can test it again. Shout out to Greg Collins from LaserBear for giving me the 3D printing files for the drill block. The digital port mod kit that I received didn't have the drill block, so he really helped me out. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like and get subscribed for more GameCube mods coming soon. I'll see you in the next video.